far as theatre installation was concerned, as being very young devotees, we weren't fully aware of the importance and what was happening with the deities of Radha and Krishna being installed. Um, I know all I was thinking back then was sweet rice, puris, halva, <laughs> things like that, you know, and I wasn't really aware of what it meant to have deities, the deity worship, and then slowly learning to develop a personal relationship uh, with Radha Govardhanadari. But as I've seen over the years, the, the, so many devotees have come and rendered service to the deities with such enthusiasm. I remember the one devotee, Radha Shaki, whenever she'd cook an evening offering, she'd be, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, from the time she started right the way through. And then I remember devotees like Anuradha, you know, she would come and, all right, she's on for fruit offering, but she wouldn't just do the three fruits and a drink. She'd turn around and make jelly and pancakes and cupcakes and biscuits. She started, the relationship was developing more and more with the deities. And then there was one devotee, Subal, I remember. It was a 610 offering and he was making all this rice. And he's putting rice on the plate for Gordon. And I thought, what, what are you doing? It's savouries, you know. And he says, what are you talking about? Lord Chaitanya is a Bengali. He's got to have his rice. He's got to have his rice. And then we can't leave out Garuda. You'd be ready to do an offering and say, Garuda, quick, it's nearly time. Put the offering on. And Garuda said, I'm coming, I'm coming. He'd come flying over and he'd start putting sabji and pakoras and halva. And you've got these nice cups that you're thinking keep all nice and clean and the plate all nice and clean. And he's piling it on. Oh, what are you doing? You know, it's everywhere. It's all over. You're putting some and it's loaded. He said, don't you know Krishna's hungry? Get it in there. Get it in there. You know, so bit by bit you watch the devotees start to develop these relationships with the deities in their own little way, whether it's dressing the deities or cooking for the deities or any service around the farm. So slowly, slowly, the worship of Radha Govardhana Dari brings out this devotion within devotees year after year after year, which is a very nice, special thing, I think. I've lived around New Govardhan my entire life. Um, Radha Govardhan Dari have been like second parents to me every time I go through a new stage of my life, they've always been there, like listening to me, um, seeing my problems, my different issues. They've always been su like supportive parents, best friends. Um, you know, I go to them, I cry and they just, it just feels like sometimes you just want to go up to the altar and just give them a hug. And it's just so painful that you can't do that sometimes. And it really hurts to be away from them. I think there was one time where I went to Vrindavan for a few weeks and when I came back, it just, when I saw Radha Govardhanadari for the first time with that like separation for the first time that I had been away from them for that long, it had just felt like there was a big part of my life missing, that they were, that there was like a piece of my heart had been taken out. And when I saw them again, it like it had been placed back together. And I think that Radha Govardhanadari have impacted my life by um, allowing me to do service for them and to be close with them has really made me the person that I am today. It's made me be more humble you know when I get chastised by the devotees at the temple for not doing things right there was one time where I I think I was like 12 or 13 and we were doing some uh, Jolan Yatra and I saw one Swami go in front of me and he he touches the deity's feet before um, after he swung them and then touched it to his head so I thought I want to do that <laughs> I didn't know of course what I was doing I was like 13 so and then I do that and then the Pujari just goes hey what are you doing and I was like what do you mean? This is like, these are my best friends. Like, you can't tell me that I can't touch the deities. Like, you know, these are just like, I felt like I had such a, I feel like I have such a personal connection with Radha Govardhanadari and um, hopefully one day I can serve them closely on the altar when I get initiated. Because I'd been a dressmaker before I joined the temple, I was designated to make their clothes, which was really nice. And I was given three Brahmatrinis to help me and um, so, that, so the deities arrived and I remember Bhutanath and Sababadi opening the, the cases and there they were. It was just like amazing to see because I'd, I'd been, before I came to, hit to New Govardhan, I was in Sydney Temple and the deities are quite small. So all of a sudden there were these big, like three feet, oh, three feet. Three foot three, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big deities. And it was like, whoa. And then, so we had to make clothes for them. So I was, I was asked to make the clothes and I was given these three girls. And so Sababadi <laughs> had got five saris <laughs> for big deities. You know, you could use five saris in one 
one set. So I had to make five sets out of five saris. And <laughs> so all the backs of the outfits were just plain, like made with what we call lawn, which is just a white cotton. And anything that you couldn't see was just made with that. So the front was all Bobby Dazzler and the back was just plain. But it was nice. The, we, these girls, we worked in, the white, in this White House every day making these sets. And it, was, it was really nice, actually. There was, a, there was a red and white set that they were installed in. And there was an a aqua and silver set. And there was a dark green and maroon set. And there was a yellow and silver set. Maroon blue. That's aqua. Oh. <laughs> and um, so we worked, we worked and worked on that. I stopped going out on the pick and made, made all these clothes for the big day. Oh, and there's one night set, only one night set that they put on every night. Did you? There's two. Apricot and there's a blue one, pale blue. The pale blue was supposed to be a day set. <laughs> it, it became a night set, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the apricot set was really nice. It was beautiful, wasn't it? It had pearl work on it and yeah. everything. It was nice. And so the, we chose the red and white set to be their installation set, which was... Um, I saw a recent photo... Oh, I saw a photo of it about couple of years ago in an old BTG and actually the skirt's too short <laughs> you can see <laughs> it's way too short <laughs> but we didn't know and we just did the, did the best we could I guess <laughs> and they looked beautiful they had um, a canopy on them that was sort of a bit like a ice cream mm. <laughs> ice cream man's canopy and but but they looked beautiful they just looked gorgeous, you know. It worked, <laughs> despite all the, all the, um, what would you call it? All the, it wasn't hardship. All the um, guessing at how how it should go. And anyway, so the the big day came um, for the installation. It was raining. It was busy, really busy, and really, really muddy. Everywhere there was mud. And lots and lots of devotees came. And I don't remember much of the installation because it was a little, a little out of my range. I was just dressing into the dressing of the deities. But the whole, the whole day was just surcharged with spiritual atmosphere. It was really nice. It was just just like going to a temple should be. <laughs> I first met Radha Govardhanadari in the early 80s. I was living in Sydney. I moved from Mayapur to Sydney and we would come up here for various celebrations and my children were actually at the um, later on started at the Gurukul here and I always remember coming to the temple and the stained glass window was always so incredible. It would, the sun would be streaming through and highlighting the devotees' faces as they were, you know, worshipping Radha Govardhanadari. So I had a, an early um, relationship with these beautiful deities, but nothing very in-depth. Um, Radha Madhava in Mayapur has always been my most worshipful deities. But I moved up here about six and a half years ago. And at that time then, I started to develop this um, relationship with Radha Govardhanadari. And it was very, um, one of the things that I noticed about these deities is that they change shapes and they change positions on, on the smiles on their faces. And it took me a while to realize it. So the first, you know, maybe year I was here, I'd look at Radha Govardhanadari think how beautiful they they are but they'd always look the same and then over time as I started to pray to them more I'd come to Mongolati and then I'd see that Krishna had a very stern expression on his face other days he would be smiling broadly
outwardly. Uh, Radharani would sometimes look like a young girl, uh, you know, 11, 12 year old girl. Other times she would look like a very grand empress. And that's part of the special um, qualities of Radha Govardhanadari, that they reciprocate with their devotees. So whether they were um, smiling because they were pleased at seeing the devotion and enthusiasm of the devotees in, in Mongolati time or not, I don't know. But I've noticed that Krishna, in particular, in particular Krishna, he has a very um, mercurial uh, way of expressing or reflecting the devotion of his um, worshippers. And that's one of the beautiful things about Radha Govardhanadari that I love so much is their reciprocation. And sometimes when I'm standing before them and I'm thinking all the different prayers that the devotees are offering to the deities and how each prayer the Lord is reciprocating with them personally. And I often pray to the deities um, of the particular things and I always feel that they're listening to me. So after, after Radha Govardhanadari were taken, uh, they'd arrived back, uh, they'd arrived here in Yugovadan and um, they were um, they placed them into the paraphernalia room. And after everybody had gone, I remember sitting down, whether I should have or whether I shouldn't have, but I, I was just running my hands over yeah. Govardhanadari's body, looking and just seeing how beautiful, how beautiful his body was and how beautifully formed he was and how sweet he was. And um, that was my very, very first impression. And um, he was, it was amazing, um, truly amazing. And then after um, seeing big Radha Govardhanadari, I, I, I didn't, I was adoring Srimati Radharani, but it was Krishna that I, I was touching his body and feeling his shin, uh, his knee bones, and his shoulders and his elbows. And it was, I, I was just amazed at how beautiful his form was. So, so beautiful. All down to his ankle bones and his feet. He was tall, wasn't he? Yes, he was tall. He was very voluptuous, yeah. very voluptuous and beautiful, voluptuous um, Krishna. And, um, and then also the same with small Radha and Krishna because then they were the deities that I was going to be worshipping because um, uh, I was looking forward to them beginning the, the formal worship and also then touching their, his beautiful, beautiful shape. And so that was, um, that was something I was really, really looking, looking forward to, to beginning that worship. And so when they arrived, it was, it was a wonderful, it was just wonderful really to see that they had arrived and how beautiful they were. I was so excited, especially when I moved here about a year and a half ago. I, I, I live just up the road and I get to come here every day and have darshan and serve them personally. Um, I, I used to cook for Radha Govardhan Madhava in France and now I cook for Radha Govardhan Dari here in the Govardhan and for me that's kind of like it's interesting. It's like I was, I, I grew up with them. I got to cook for Radha Govinda Madhava and then I ended up coming here in my, you know, later years. And I get to grow old here and continue the same service that I did as a 12 year old. And so for me, that is like, that's the perfection. That's just what makes my life so wonderful now. And I remember um, thinking, you know, how how um, it's almost like, you know, Krishna just played a trick on me, you know. He was like, well, you get to have me in this, in this way now, because when I left Numaipur, I was so devastated. I was so sad to leave, to leave those deities, and uh, I loved Krishna Balaram, and I loved Radha Govinda Madhava, and it just made my, it made me so sad that I was never going to see them again. And then I end up coming here, and I get to see them every day and I get to serve them and I find um, I find joy I find joy in that I find comfort in that and yeah sometimes I uh, I do really miss Radha Govinda Madhava but um, Radha Govinda Andari are our perfection they they um, especially when I get to cook for them I feel like 
that um, that particular service when it was given to me. I, I didn't seek it, I didn't ask for it, but one day I was approached and they said, would you like to cook for Radha Govardhanandari uh, the breakfast on Thursday? And I just felt, I, I, I felt so overwhelmed with, with, um, ap with like gratitude and I was happiness and I was like, wow, they actually want me to cook for them again. Like Krishna's, because I believe that he wanted me to cook. You know, ultimately he gets what he wants, right? He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I was like, okay, he wants me to cook. So I started going into the kitchen every Thursday and I remember when I first started, it was like I'd make this really simple, you know, I'd follow like it was the sabji and the puri and the halava and the pakora and the basic. And then the next week I was like, hang on, I'm going to start making pancakes. And so then I started making the pancakes and then I made a caramel, salted caramel sauce to go on that. And then I went from that to, okay, now I got to make like honeycomb. And then I started making the honeycomb and then suddenly I started making another sabji. And so... It's like every time I went in the kitchen to cook for him, it was like he somehow wanted more. He wanted to push me more to see how far I was going to go, you know, to just give every last drop of what I had to give him. And so I found that that was, that was funny. That was a little, that was his way of saying, you know. And I, I always say to my helpers, if you finish cooking, by 7.30 and the kitchen's clean and everything's done and that means that he haven't done enough. I feel like I have to give more. So that's just how I feel about my service here to Radha Govardhandari. And I hope my prayer is that I can continue to do more service for Radha Govardhandari and that um, I'm qualified enough one day to perhaps, you know, um, go on the altar and do what I used to do when I was 12, which was I used to dress um, the deities as well. That was one of my services. So, yeah, I'm very grateful to be here in Govardhan with this beautiful community and with you, Radha Govardhandari. I love you and thank you for letting me stay at your lotus feet eternally. Thank you. <laughs>